A pre-Christmas miracle happened near the mouth of South Africa's Chalumna River on December 22, 1938. Marjorie Courtney Latimer, the curator of East London Museum, was on her routine visit to the docks. She was checking if there were any unusual catches from local fishermen. Suddenly, she spotted a strange fin sticking out of a pile of discarded fish. Intrigued, she cleaned off the slime to reveal an incredible discovery. A pale blue fish with silvery flecks, thin scales, and four fins that looked almost like limbs. And it was huge too, five feet long, weighing about 127 pounds. Marjorie actually specialized in birds, but she had always been fascinated by the natural world, including the ocean. She didn't know what the fish was, but she had a feeling that it was something special. So she had the fish loaded into a taxi and taken to her museum. She then went through lots of reference books, but no matter how hard Marjorie tried, she couldn't identify the species. She decided to show it to the chairman of the museum's board, but he just dismissed it as a common rock cod. Marjorie didn't listen to him. The creature fascinated her so much that she kept studying it and even tried to preserve it by having it taxidermy, although she couldn't save the organs. Desperate for answers, she reached out to a fish expert, J. L. B. Smith. But tough luck, he was away at that moment. When Smith finally saw the drawing, he got instantly intrigued. By January, he finally wrote the response to Marjorie, saying the fish was giving him sleepless nights. He was eager to see it in person. On February 16, when he finally arrived at the museum and laid eyes on the fish, he was stunned. Suddenly, it dawned on him that he was looking at a coelacanth, a species believed to have gone extinct 66 million years ago. This made it a Lazarus species, an extinct species that reappears after a long absence in the fossil record. It was like seeing a fossil come to life. Scientists thought that this creature had vanished with the dinosaurs. Thanks to Marjorie's persistence, this became one of the most remarkable biological finds of the 20th century. The entire genus Latimeria was named in her honor. Turns out, fish was vibing in the deep ocean waters completely unbothered by an asteroid strike for millions of years. Today, at least two species of coelacanth are known to exist. Both come from this ancient lineage that survived the test of time. They mostly live in the Indian Ocean, with some chilling around Indonesia here and there. Coelacanths look and behave very differently from other fish. Their creepy fins actually move in a way similar to how human arms and legs move. They also have a special joint in their skull that lets them raise a part of their head while feeding. That's because they're related to tetrapods, those guys that were the first to step out of the waters to the land. Michael Smith is a British naturalist. On July 2018, he was exploring the remote Wandiwoi mountain range in Papua, Indonesia. He was there to search for rare, pretty flowers called rhododendrons, but he accidentally took a photo of a funky-looking creature. Smith got very curious about this animal. He then returned for another expedition, this time with a local guide. He spent 10 tough days searching high in the mountains. The terrain was harsh, with constant rain, slippery ground, and leeches crawling into their boots. When they were already exhausted and close to giving up, the miracle happened. The team finally spotted and snapped a picture of the animal. This cute thing turned out to be the Wandiwoi tree kangaroo, the one thought to be extinct for 90 years. The first time it was discovered was 1928. It's a sad story. A biologist spotted it while studying the area, and this was the first and the last time we saw that animal. But as it turned out, it wasn't extinct at all. It's just a very elusive and sneaky creature. This marsupial lives in small, isolated, steep and misty forests. Very few people venture there, all because of the reasons we mentioned. The rugged terrain, dense bamboo thickets, lack of water, even the local hunters had never seen one. They're super cute with their round face, reddish fur and appearance that looks like a mix of a monkey and a bear. It's a weird type of kangaroo that jumps on the trees, not the land. 
When Michael Smith rediscovered it, he immediately contacted experts, including a specialist on tree kangaroos. The discovery was confirmed. Even though it's still hard to catch these creatures in the wild, they're still a mystery to science, and scientists try to protect the species. In 1996, researchers from the Wildlife Conservation Society were walking around the meat market in Thakek, Laos. Suddenly, they spotted a bunch of weird rats. Yeah, it may seem to be a common thing for a market, but those were no simple rats at all. At first, they thought it was a new species. They called this new rodent the Laotian rock rat. This animal was so different from other rodents that biologists wanted to place it in its own family. But in 2006, Mary Dawson and her team challenged this idea. They suggested that the Laotian rock rat might actually belong to an ancient family of rodents, the ones that were believed to have been extinct for 11 million years. In the same year, scientists finally captured and documented a live specimen. And guess what? Those were indeed those ancient rats. They didn't go extinct. They just preferred to avoid the spotlight and decided to go vibe in the limestone karsts of Laos and a small part of Vietnam. Turns out, the locals were even familiar with the rodent, regularly trapping it for food. Right, that must be the true reason for their hermit lifestyle. Now, these guys are a huge interest for scientists and are being studied carefully. In 2019, some scientists went on a joint expedition on Fernandina Island in the Galapagos Archipelago. During the expedition, the team started noticing weird things, tracks, scat, and claw marks on trees. By following them, they suddenly discovered the culprit, a mysterious turtle that was sitting on a high elevation on the volcanic island. It was a lone female tortoise. They nicknamed her Fernanda. That's because they recognized her as a Fernandina giant tortoise, a species that was thought to have been extinct for 112 years. The last time we've ever seen this species was in 1906, when scientists found a male tortoise and sent it to the California Academy of Sciences. They thought that volcanic eruptions and extensive hunting caused the species to completely disappear. This was a huge deal. It provided hope for the survival of the Fernandina giant tortoise. Park rangers said that they saw signs of at least two other tortoises, so maybe they'll be able to find them soon. The Galapagos Conservancy has launched fundraising efforts to support further expeditions. In July of 2007, Luis Enrique Minguez was hiking in La Palma, a small island in the Canary Islands. He's a researcher in the Institute of Ecology and Conservation. While he was walking through the northeastern part of the island, he spotted an interesting lizard. The lizard was almost 12 inches long. He saw it near a forest trail, about 147 feet above sea level. Minguez took a photo of the lizard and shared it with his buddy researchers. After seeing the pictures, they realized that it was the long-lost La Palma giant lizard. This species was presumed to be extinct for centuries. They thought that it disappeared within the last 500 years due to being hunted by cats and habitat destruction. Unfortunately, even though they were super hyped up at first, things didn't go so well next time. They did some follow-up expeditions in October of 2007, and then some more. But they couldn't spot the lizard anywhere again since then. The lizard probably lived in very high and dry spots of the island. Researchers hope to discover at least some of the lizards in the future and help them thrive once again. There are plenty of fish in the sea. Some of them look totally like Nemo or Dory. Then there's the butterfly fish and fancy guppy, which is indeed really fancy. And then there's... Ah! What on earth is that? I would definitely not pay for a diving experience to see this guy. The anglerfish has the unofficial title of the ugliest animal in the world, but I wouldn't dare to break that news to it. There are more than 200 species of anglerfish currently swimming somewhere in the gloomy depths of the Atlantic and Antarctic Oceans, up to a mile below the surface. Some of them prefer different living conditions, the shallow tropical environments. Different kinds of anglerfish vary in shape and size, 
from the famous Black Sea Devil to frogfish, monkfish, football fish, goosefish, batfish, and sea toad. The larger ones can be half as long as a full-sized bed, but most are less than a foot long. Since the choice of meals where these guys live isn't that huge, they had to come up with a unique hunting strategy. They don't waste their priceless life energy on following prospective prey. Instead, they use a piece of dorsal spine that sticks above their mouths like a fishing pole, hence the name of the fish. There's a sack of bioluminescent bacteria that glows brightly in the dark at the end of that rod. The light lures prey, and all the anglerfish has to do is wait and then enjoy its lunch delivered right to its mouth. Their bodies are pliable and huge, so they can easily swallow prey twice their size. Deep sea anglerfish eat whatever they can find. Species that live in more shallow water aren't picky either and can eat anything from shrimp to snails and small fish. Only female anglerfish have the cool fishing rod feature though. So what about their males? Finding a soulmate deep under the sea isn't that easy. I mean, literally, there's no light down there. Plus, there are frigid temperatures and low oxygen levels. Anglerfish can't afford to go on many dates in those conditions, so they mate for life. And before you go aw about it, I have to tell you, they do it in quite a special way. Male anglerfish are much smaller than their ladies. The contrast is so striking that when researchers first got interested in their love life, they thought those males were actually the offspring, or larvae, hanging out next to their moms. Certain anglerfish male species have receptors that alert them that there's a female nearby. After they mate, the male bites into his woman and stays attached to her head, belly, near her tail, and other areas he can access. While they morph together forever, the female fish gets the male's cells, DNA, and reproductive organs, but loses her immune response cells. The male gets free permanent housing and nutrition. Given the current real estate prices, it sounds like a dream. But that accommodation is shared by up to eight males, and they can't move out if they ever feel like it. You're unlikely to meet this deep sea fish in real life, but if you meet an anglerfish in your favorite video game, remember that you can easily outswim it and make it kinder to you with tranquilizing arrows. Once you befriend it, the anglerfish can be your scout and help you discover new areas with its bioluminescent pods. Back in the real world, down in the twilight zone of the ocean, about 650 to 3300 feet down, the anglerfish isn't the only creature you're lucky you'll probably never meet. Many of the locals look like they come straight out of science fiction or horror movies, but that's because they had to adapt to this dark, deep world. I did my best to get you prepared for the creatures you're going to meet, starting with the common fangtooth. They spend most of their lives deep down, but at night, they move toward the surface to snack. These guys are more active than most other deep sea dwellers. They don't wait for food to come their way, but actually follow it and then get it with their long, hungry teeth. They don't have a built-in light bulb like the anglerfish, so they've developed a great sense of smell and use as much sunlight as they can get there in the depth to get around. Sometimes, even the shadow of a passing by prospective prey is enough for them to switch to action mode. And though they don't look too charming, they're completely harmless to humans if you ever run into one of these guys. Stoplight Loosejaw sounds like a great name for an alternative band, but it's actually another deep sea resident with sneaky hunting habits. It has special light-producing photophores under each eye. They emit green and red light like a stoplight, hence the name of the fish. Unlike other fish, these guys hardly ever leave the twilight and midnight zones. Their lower jaw is a quarter of the total body length, and the stoplight keeps it open all the time, hoping to get some lunch. It looks like a ferocious predator, but mostly prefers zooplankton, with an occasional dessert of shrimp, krill, and fish. I'm sure you didn't expect to meet a hybrid of an eel and a bird, but here it is. The slender snipe eel has a beak, 
much like that of a bird, with curving tips. The beak is equipped with tiny hooked teeth that the eels use to catch the antennae of delicious shrimp. And it sure is slender, stretching up to five feet and weighing only a few ounces. Scientists don't know all of this guy's secrets, since it's pretty tricky to study in their natural habitat. But it looks like they only produce offspring once in a lifetime and then pass away. Glass squids like to take it easy in life and literally go with the flow. They're filled with a solution which is lighter than water, so they don't have to make any effort to move around the deep sea looking for food and partners. These creatures are transparent, so they blend into any landscape and don't even cast a shadow while moving. Talk about a great survival tactic. If danger finds it anyway, it can transform into a lumpy ball, pushing its head and tentacles into its mantle cavity. It can also release ink into the mantle and go from transparent to black. The same ink can protect it against hungry whales and seabirds. Another tactic they use to scare off predators is to activate their light-emitting organs around their eyes. Hmm, I'm getting hungry. Maybe I can snack on this sea cucumber. Ouch, it's moving. So I guess it doesn't belong in a salad after all. These soft-bodied fellows live in all parts of the ocean, from shallow waters to the deep underwater world. Most of them slowly move around with their tiny feet, but some crawl around by flexing their bodies. Sea cucumbers can shed their internal organs when there's a predator approaching. Those sticky organs distract the intruder, and the happy cucumber moves on and just grows the organs back. What's that glistening in the distance? Looks like someone dropped gems in the water. That's a sea sapphire, also known as the most beautiful animal you've never seen. Some males of this type of copepod can change color from deep blue to purple, red, or gold. One second later, it's gone. And it's back, shimmering bright. The secret to this magic is that their bodies are transparent and reflect light differently at certain angles. It looks like it's their way of communicating between each other and attracting mates. Female sea sapphires don't have the same superpower, but their eyes are bigger compared to males, probably to spot them from a distance. Males roam wild and free, and their ladies stay in the crystal palaces of strange barrel-shaped jellies called salps. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.